So you got your new Holly ECU installed, or really any ECU for that matter, but everything around here always seems to be Holly. And now you're ready to get it tuned, but you don't know if you should have it remote tuned or dyno tuned. Now this video is not about me convincing you to come to me for tuning. It's about me helping you choose what tuning method is gonna be better for you in general. I've actually begun dedicating the majority of my time to helping you learn how to tune your Holly EFI system yourself. And as a result of that, I've actually stopped offering remote tuning for the time being. And again, for the time being, I've stopped tuning any other systems other than Holly EFI except for return customers and some different shops that I tune for. There's a few exceptions here and there. So really there just isn't enough hours in the day for me to be able to do it all. So the last thing I'm trying to do is direct more work to myself with this video. So don't think that's the objective here. First up, let's go over five of the biggest advantages that remote tuning offers. First on the list is you can choose any tuner you like. They do not need to be local to you. You can literally work with anybody in the entire world. Next with remote tuning, scheduling is usually much easier. Most of the people doing remote tuning are actually tuning several cars at the same time so usually whenever you're ready they're ready and as a result of them being able to do multiple cars at the same time and a lot of them being able to work from home and not necessarily having any overhead that a shop owner may have brings us to the next pro which is actually usually a remote tune is less expensive than a dyno tune but hiring a tuner based off of price alone can become significantly more expensive very quickly also some tuners charge the same price for a tune regardless if it's at their shop and on their dyno or if they're doing it remotely. A friend of mine charges $10,000 flat rate per car regardless of how the tuning is taking place. Let me guess, you must be rich. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. Yes, people actually pay that and he's nearly impossible to book an appointment with because he stays so busy tuning cars all around the world at that price. Remember, expensive is relative and there are many different levels to all this car stuff. Up next is simple revisions are usually quicker if somebody is set up for remote tuning, especially if you've already been emailing files back and forth and you already have a system in place. Some dyno shops may want you to bring the car back to them if there is some touch-ups that need to happen or if you did just have your car dyno tuned and you've never personally connected your computer to an ECU, you might not even be in a position for the dyno shop to be able to help you remotely. What is your computer doing on my computer? As to where, if you've been doing a remote tune, obviously you already know how to do all of that stuff. So the quick updates and the quick revisions tend to go a little bit quicker with the remote tuning option. And the last pro with remote tuning we'll cover is that if somebody is good at remote tuning, that typically means that they have a decent amount of experience with in-person or with dyno tuning. I've seen this go horribly wrong, but usually if you're having a remote tune done, the timing table, for example, has been built from previous tunes they have done and are now applying to your vehicle. When done correctly, this can be very effective but it can still be a little bit generic as tuning isn't a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. But an experienced remote tuner should be able to get you into the ballpark very quickly in that regard. I'm sure there are several more pros that people find with remote tuning. Obviously, like, we can't cover everything in one video, but if there's anything important that you feel that I'm missing, uh, let me know down in the comments below. Now let's take a look at five advantages of dyno and or in-person tuning. First up, we have safety. Nowadays, it seems people care about this one less and less, but if you're trying to iron out a car from scratch or if it makes a bunch of power, it's impossible to deny deny that doing the tuning on the dyno is significantly safer. This also applies to drag cars and track tuning. I can say with 100% confidence, we have collectively saved people well over a million dollars in damage and destruction by putting newly built cars on the dyno. I've seen cars that have had issues that absolutely would have resulted in crashing and likely the car catching on fire. We didn't blow ourselves up, but we still might. You'll never be able to change my mind about safety being the primary advantage that the dyno tuning offers. Up next we have convenience. Uh, you do not need to know how to connect your laptop to your computer. Oh my god! You do not need to know how to send files back and forth or follow directions on how to drive the car. Typically you hand over your keys and that's about all that you have to do until you pick the car up. The next advantage we have with dyno tuning is troubleshooting. Now a good remote tuner may be able to pick up on issues and problems, but he can only really help as much as the information that you provide him. Sometimes just being able to look at something can make things a thousand percent easier to diagnose a problem. Say for example, your boost control isn't working properly. You can look at a log remotely. You can see that it's commanding the correct information but the car's not actually doing what it's supposed to do. The remote tuner may ask you if it's wired correctly and if it's plumbed correctly, and you may say yes, because you honestly think that it is, but you may be able to take one look at it, see that you're missing a plug on the side port of the wastegate, and that's why the boost is 364 pounds when it's supposed to be eight. 
That's just one example of a million different scenarios where being with the car would make troubleshooting significantly easier. Also, it can be a lot easier to get the car to replicate the same problem multiple times in a row for different reasons to help kind of troubleshooting as well, as where if you're trying to replicate a problem out on the street, it can become much more difficult. Fourth advantage that dyno tuning offers is actually having some numbers. I'm sick of the, this dyno reads high, this dyno reads low crap, but it can be invaluable to have numbers to make sure everything is working correctly. If your car is down 200 horsepower, regardless of what you think that the dyno should or shouldn't read, it's pretty beneficial to know that the car is down on power from where it should be. There's nothing worse than spending a whole bunch of money on something and not getting the results that you were looking for. And sometimes you need some verification that things are working the way that they should be. Uh, some of these cars make so much power nowadays that even running on seven cylinders can be enough to do fourth gear rolling burnouts on the street. And you might not even know that you're giving up power due to an issue that the car may be having that you don't even know about. I see cars that are down hundreds of horsepower from where they should be on a very regular basis. And more often than not, the actual data log makes it appear that the car is running just fine. And even crazier is the owners of the car rant and rave about how fast the cars are. It really makes this tuner look like a superstar when he finds an additional 200 horsepower by fixing a problem that the car has. The last point we'll cover here with the dyno tuning is verification. So your tuner set up your wide open throttle air fuel ratio to 11.5, but would it make more power at 11.8? If so, how much? Would it make the same power but be safer at 11.3 air fuel? How about timing? How much power would it gain with two more degrees? Is the timing so conservative that you're giving up 100 horsepower? Does it have three degrees more timing in it than where it quit making power, even though the spark plugs say that it's happy? If it blows up, it blows up. Being able to change these values and get direct feedback can go a really long way in knowing that your tune is exactly where you want it to be. You simply can't get the tune that dialed in without some sort of measurement taking place. And a dyno, well, a good dyno, anyways, brings the number of variables as close to zero as you can get as far as being able to make back-to-back -back runs, make small changes, and see what that one individual change actually did. So before we decide on which option is better, there are a few other things to take into consideration. So just because a shop or a tuner has a dyno does not mean that they know what they are doing. Anybody can buy a dyno. There are no qualifications to purchase one. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, if a tuner brags about tuning a thousand cars per week, you should probably question how good of a job they're actually doing on those cars. Next, I would encourage you to ask questions. Is the tuner that you're going to consider hiring going to keep the car overnight and work on cold start the next morning? Are they going to spend nine seconds tuning the part throttle and cruising portion of the map? Are they going to work on tuning the car for three full days and that's why their price is far more expensive than the guy that's going to make two full throttle runs and send you on your way? I feel you should be paying your tuner for a combination of experience and their time. Well, duh. I've watched people use my dyno, spend 15 minutes on a car, charge a ton of money for it, and completely ignore anything other than full throttle. My price went up. Maybe that's okay on a drag car, but it's probably not the ideal way to go about tuning on your daily driver. I could talk about this stuff for hours, but the last thing we'll touch on here is to make sure that your tuner is familiar with your platform. A tuner could be the best in the world at tuning small block Fords. That doesn't mean he's going to be the best bet for tuning your BMW. Or the best drag race tuner guy in the world might not be the best at getting the drivability perfect dialed in on your Volkswagen. Make sure whoever you're using for tuning is familiar with your particular application and your particular goals and what you're using your particular car for. I personally turn away a ton of work for things that I'm just simply not familiar with. This is going to take me far longer to do it and the customer is not going to get the experience who somebody in specializes in that platform may be able to offer. So the million dollar question is should you hire a remote tuner or should you take your car to a dyno shop? There really isn't a black and white answer to this question. Both types of tuning can go really bad or or really good, and they both have their pros and their cons. The real answer to the question, in my opinion, is actually to ask another question first, and that is who will actually be doing the tuning. I suggest choosing a tuner first, and then speaking with them about your goals and your concerns and what services they offer. Obviously, if you're not interested in remote tuning, you probably would want to speak with whatever local dyno shops you have access to. And if you're looking at using a remote tuner, you can rent dyno time and use the remote tuner as well, kind of getting the best of both worlds. It's a good combination. Racetrack tuning remotely or in person is also an option option as well. I pick a tuner first and then come up with a game plan on either going straight to the track or maybe spending a day running out a dyno before you hit the racetrack. Usually running one day on the dyno, you can accomplish about the same that you could accomplish in three to four days at the racetrack. So suddenly the dyno rental time becomes very cost effective, especially once you factor in travel expenses, entry fees, food, crew, and all of the other expenses associated with going to the racetrack. A day of the track can get pretty expensive pretty quickly depending on the size of your operation.
Now, regardless of who is tuning your car and how they are doing it, there's always room to make adjustments to get things dialed in exactly to your liking. And there's no better way to do that than to learn how to do it yourself. If you're interested in learning how to tune and make adjustments to your Holly EFI system yourself, click on the video on the screen now to watch a video answering the most common questions I get asked regarding my Holly EFI training course named Tune the Trilogy, where I teach you how to tune your Holly Sniper, your Holly Terminator X, and your Holly HP and Dominator ECUs and software.